Welcome to Stuart Learning Center, where we translate research into brain-friendly, evidence-based resources, tools, and learning experiences. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Anita Stuart McCafferty here with you from Stuart Learning Center. I also have my sister, Andrew Jarvis here with you virtually. And we'd like to talk to you about one of our favorite brain-friendly strategies. We refer to it as DQ. And it's a vocabulary strategy, a way to help students engage with important vocabulary or concepts from any unit that you might teach. We know the importance of vocabulary in being able to develop crystallized intelligence. So that way of helping us to think more deeply and to really build additional neurological pathways. And so we wanna grow those dendrites and we also wanna help students be able to retrieve what they have already been learning. So we use this strategy, D-Cube, as a go-to strategy because it engages students in a variety of modalities. So there are three Ds that go through different rounds that you can use with this strategy. One of them is to describe it, so using words. Two, the second one is to draw it. So no words, drawing only. And the third version is dramatize. So neither using words, nor using drawing to be able to get your partner or partners to guess the particular vocabulary word. So I'm gonna share with you in a moment an example from a seventh grade science classroom and then talk to you about how you can adapt this strategy for your particular student audience. So whether it be younger students, middle school, high school students, or it's adult learners, and also talk about how you can adapt it for both the face-to-face -face environment and for the virtual environment. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you so that we can look at an example of this strategy. So this is D-cubed vocabulary, as I mentioned it to you. And we recommend that if you're doing it in a face-to-face -face environment, that you be able to show the words, the important vocabulary words, uh, one slide at a time, one word at a time, and that you have your students pair up. Partners work really, really well. And one of the partners will face the screen where the word will be displayed the other partner faces away from the screen, but so that they can see their partner. And then in round one, so let's look at an example of this strategy for a, for a science unit on sound energy. So let's just imagine that we have a group of seventh graders and we have been teaching them certain concepts and certain vocabulary and we want to do a little quick review. Maybe it's an entrance ticket. Maybe it's an, an activity for an exit or a review. I like to use it as a transition strategy as well. So we've been sitting maybe for 15 or 20 minutes and now it's time to get everybody up, get some movement, get some talking and some energy. And so the way that we would do that is I would put together a, a group of slides that are all ready to go that I can mix and match whenever. And so for this round, I would have my students use words only to describe it. So this, I always talk to them about, this is not a sounds like rhymes with kind of activity. It's really having them describe, in this case, what do they know about the Doppler effect and what clues could they give to their partner uh, to have their partner be able to guess Doppler effect. And when their partner guesses Doppler effect correct, then they, they have a practice touchdown little dance or victory celebration, whatever it might be. And so they would do that. There's a lot of laughing, a lot of talking going on and all the students are engaged. After a few moments, I would call the group together, have everybody face the screen 
And so for those who had the opportunity to guess correctly, they're like, yeah, the Doppler effect. For those who didn't quite get there, they're like, oh, that's what they were describing, the Doppler effect. And then I might invite a student quickly to share a clue that their partner gave them that helped them be able to guess correctly. Now, once they have had that opportunity, I have partners switch places. So if you were the clue giver last time, this time you are the receiver of the clues trying to guess. So you are the person guessing. And we would go through as many versions of the describe it as we want. Now, other times I might go to a different round. So to draw it. And in this case, everybody would need a little whiteboard with them or a piece of scrap paper. And once the word comes up on the screen, in this case, wavelength, the person that is the clue giver will draw to the best of their ability something that will make, hopefully, make their partner guess wavelength. And the process continues where you would then switch roles. The final round, the D cubed, the third one, is dramatize it. So again, a word when it's on the screen would go up and the clue giver would then act it out. So use their body, use uh, you know, their hands, whatever it is to be able to act out in some way interference for their partner to be able to guess. Again, this is a strategy that you can use. I've used it with younger learners with instead of the word only, there is an image, a picture that goes along with it. And then they're being able to get their partners to guess. I have used it in the virtual classroom in a few ways. And one of the, one of the ways that I've used it virtually is say for instance, I'm doing a, a Zoom session with my students and I have done it with a whole group. So if I've done it with a whole group, then what I do instead of displaying the word on the screen, I send a private chat to one student with that particular vocabulary word. And then it's their time to be able to either describe it, draw it for us using a whiteboard feature on Zoom or a piece of paper where they hold up to the screen or to dramatize it depending on the on the round that we're in. So that's one way if it's a whole group setting. Another way to be able to use this strategy is to be able to send students with their partners to a breakout to breakout rooms and then I share to just one partner in each breakout room the particular word or maybe a couple of words that they are gonna be using as the clue giver with their students. So again, one of the reasons that our brains love strategies like this is because we need help, ongoing help with retrieval. So once we've been introduced to vocabulary or to concepts, we need practice with being able to go back through and be able to cement those neural pathways as they're, as they're moving on, right? We, want it, we don't wanna make sure that those are strong. So we're having students go back and forth and practice being able to retrieve that information. And each time they do that, it gets stronger. We know that our brains love visuals and that we love games. And that, so though, you know, laughter and those experiences so using a vocabulary strategy like D cube accomplishes a lot of things. It also is a way for us to get students up and moving and have them really share their metaphors and their skills with their classmates in ways that are probably a little bit different than what we might use as a teacher. And so we hope that you have fun with this strategy. We'd love to hear how you've used it in your classroom. Have a great day, have a brain friendly, happy learning kind of day. Thank you for joining us for another Stuart Learning Center production. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also reach us 
via email at stuartlearningcenter at gmail.com. Remember, keep learning at the center. Thank you.